Hello and welcome. I'm Michelle Paver and we're going out live on my Facebook page and this is this will also be available on my YouTube channel and you can follow me on Twitter as well. Just you'll be able to find all the links on my website which is michellepaver.com. Um, first of all, I should just say sorry for the slightly postponed uh, Michelle Paver live from a couple of weeks ago. There was a family illness um, and somebody was rushed to hospital, my mother, and so it was all a bit sort of fraught for a week or so, but thankfully she's she's well again. Um, so I'm back. And this month, what have we got for the we've got for you this month? We're doing a quick roundup of um, what's been happening uh, on social media, what you've been saying about me on social media, for which many thanks. Um, I'll be recommending a book and a, a DVD that might raise a few smiles in this dark winter of ours, um, if you're in this part of the of the world. And of course, my favourite bit, I will be tackling your questions. Um, so first of all, yeah, social media. Well, the big news, as far as I was concerned, uh, and some of you, was <laughs> the escape of Torak the wolf from the UK Wolf Conservation Trust, uh, where I've done all my research. And as many of you will know, Torak, of course, was named after the hero in my books. And um, I, I, I bottle fed him as a cub. I've got to know him. He's my favourite wolf at the Trust. Let me just tell you how I found out the news. Um, I was actually overseas. I was in Costa Rica being driven through the jungles of Costa Rica. And I just happened to be checking my mobile phone. And I got a, tweet, uh, a text from a good friend of mine. And the text began... You're not going to believe this, but a wolf has escaped from your wolf trust, or the wolf trust that you you know and love. And I gasped, and then the text cut off uh, because I lost reception and I only got half the text. So I had a really uncomfortable five minutes being driven along through this jungle thinking, I know it's Torak. I am 100% certain it was Torak who escaped. That's the sort of thing he would do. There he is, looking impossibly cute as a cub. Um and, oh, my God, I hope he hasn't been run over on the motorway or shot because he's a beautiful, friendly wolf. But, you know, some people wouldn't know that. So, I had, as I say, I had a really uncomfortable five minutes. Then we got out of the gorge and the jungle. I got reception and, yay, uh, the rest of the tech said, don't worry, he's fine. He's safe and he's been recaptured. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Amanda Craig, for tweeting. Um, thank you, Danielle. Um, and yes, you, you say, I take it, that's how he got his name. And yes, it in, indeed is how he got his name. Thank you, Ginny uh, and Richard and Gemma. Yes, um, he's definitely linked with me. Um, but now, enough of Torak. Um, let's just move on to ghost stories. And uh, yes, um, Deb, I think, has tweeted, um, any more ghost stories in the pipeline? Um, yes. Well, interesting you should say that, Deb. Um, I've been mentioning before that I've been working on a Gothic story set in the in the Suffolk Fens. And um, strangely, as I've been sort of finishing it, there's more of a ghostly element than I thought. So, yes, there is a ghost story, Gothic story in the pipeline. Not sure yet um, when it will see the light of day. Um, but I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm practically finished with it, so, so it, it shouldn't be too long. Um, still on things ghostly, we've got something from Anne, um, the writer and film critic, uh, something very nice, actually, um, who'd been reading Dark Matter. And uh, yes, um, I gave you nightmares. Well, I'm, I'm delighted because that was the aim. Um, but I'm also glad that it's made you want to visit the far north. That's, that's also the aim of the story. Um, a lovely one from Empire of Books, um, a, a, a well-known website. I'm glad to hear, delighted to hear that you're still going strong. Um, and how lovely. Um, yes, you bring. You hope that 2018 brings with it news of a new Michelle Paper book. You're not fast as to what it is? Well, I can tell you um, that I don't know if it'll actually bring the book itself, but yes, there'll certainly be, be news. Um, as I've mentioned, there's the Gothic story, that there's something else in the pipeline as well. Um, so there'll definitely be news. Something from Martin, uh, just finished Dark Matter. Um, something, yes, and, and you, you've been listening to it and, and you really liked the Jeremy Northam reading. I totally agree. I think he, I was there in the studio uh, when he read it. It was, it was fantastic. 
Um, it was a slightly fraught um, experience because it, it takes about two or three days to do the, the reading. And we weren't in our usual sound studio, which is all beautifully um, insulated. This one, everybody found out to, slightly to their consternation, wasn't completely insulated. And there was a quite a noisy door that used to slam about sort of two floors down. And occasionally, Jeremy would get to this fantastic sort of spooky bit, lots of pauses, and he read it beautifully. And then we'd hear a door slam. So the director, Nick, I think you saw him there in one shot, would have to sort of listen again and think, no, I'm sorry, we can pick it up. You're going to have to read that again. But Jeremy was patience itself. So um, a superb reading under slightly difficult conditions. Um, something from Chris. Oh, a lovely one. Christmas seems a long time ago, but... Um, Feet up, glass of wine, reading a really gripping ghost story. Thank you, Thin Air. Um, that's a great way to read it. Um, I was really pleased about that. And then Alice, another one, finished Christmas, first Christmas book finished. I'm now questioning how much I really love mountains. I hope you've regained your love of mountains, Alice. I would hate to think you'd lost that. And finally, a lovely one from Sarah, finished Dark Matter, last night at about one o'clock. Yes, and that the house was making creaking noises. Well, thank you, Sarah, for reading that in just the conditions that I wanted my ghost stories to be read, you know, at night in a dark, creaky house. Um, that gives them the chance that, that they they deserve to be, be get the full atmosphere. So thank you for all of you who've got in touch. Um, really lovely to, to hear from you all. Now, I think, yes, um, moving on, we move on to the sort of recommendations bit. This is just something, a, a book that I thought maybe because it's winter, it might raise a laugh. Some of you will know this, Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons. It's actually a grown-up book, but anyone from about sort of 12 years on would probably enjoy it. Um, it was written in 1932, I think, but it, you wouldn't know it. It's, it's incredibly fresh. It's one of the funniest books I've ever read. Um, what's it about? Well, Flora Post. She's 19. She's a rather sophisticated Londoner um, and she's just been orphaned and she's got to go and live with her rustic um, relatives, the Starkadders, in deepest, darkest Sussex near the village of Howling. And it's it's really a sort of a spoof of or a takeoff, a parody of the kind of rural melodramas that take themselves too seriously. But that doesn't nearly do it justice. Um, now, you, you're seeing pictures of some pretty good adaptations, but actually no adaptation does it real justice because the, the delight, the laughs are in the words, are in the, the writing itself. And uh, so anyway, I don't want to over-recommend it, but it makes me laugh out loud and not many books do that. And then there's a complete change, a, a, a film, a DVD, which um, I love, uh, Galaxy Quest. Again, many of you may know it. It's again, it's it's um, it's a very affectionate parody or spoof of Star Trek, really, and of Star Trek fans, of which I am proud to say that I am one. Um, and please don't call us Trekkies; we are Trekkers. Anyway, it's it's a gloriously funny, inventive, clever, beautifully acted movie. Um, my my favourite bit, if you've seen the movie, is is there's a bit there's, that's one of the aliens, um, that they're, they're very endearing aliens. He's he's in a I think he's he's it's him he's in a, a lift, and he suddenly sort of pops out of his alien his his human disguise and becomes what he really is, which is sort of as I recall it's sort of lots of squidgy tentacles and things like that, and I sometimes feel a bit like that when I've just done a sort of a long book tour and I've been trying to be nice all the time, which isn't the usual me, and then I suddenly go back to my hotel room and oh, I can be my alien self again. So anyway, um, I love Galaxy Quest, so Cold Comfort Farm, Galaxy Quest, perhaps they'll raise a laugh uh, or a smile for you. Yes, now we are getting to my favourite bit, which is Ask Michelle Anything. And um, you've you've brought in some, sent in some wonderful questions, so I've tried to sort of um, sort them, as I do, very orderly. I think we'll start off with a trio of questions about, or, or comments rather, lovely comments about the ghost stories. Somebody, um, Jess, has just finished uh, Thin, Air, Thin Air and Dark Matter and is just saying some lovely things about how much you've enjoyed them. And now you're going back to the entire back catalogue. Well, good luck with that, Jess, and thank you. Um, and now Jessica from Germany 
Um, this is this is a lovely one. Um, you particularly like uh, for, Without Charity, which was my first novel. Um, first one I had published. You call it Chicken Soup for the Soul. Um, and there's something you say which is very beautiful, and your English is marvellous. Um, I thank you so much for this beautiful book, which will accompany me for my lifetime as one of my best friends. And I think that's very well put. Um, Favourite books often are one's, one's best friends. That's beautifully put, so thank you. And now we have Denise, um, who says, I've just read Thin Air. Um, and she says some lovely things about it. Uh, I'm now going to read Dark Matter. Um, and you've tried in Waterstones to order without charity, but they say it's no longer in print. They're right. Um, I can just tell you that it is available on ebook. I don't know if you have a Kindle, but it is available on ebook. Um, we have some plans for, for bringing it out again as a hardback, uh, as a paperback, but we haven't got around to doing that yet because that would involve me reading the entire story and sort of checking it. And I haven't got time. Um, but uh, it is available as an ebook. Now, moving on, there's a couple of questions um, about signing books. This one is from Justine, who. who Actually, I, she laid on a wonderful book club um, about this time last year. And it was, I had lots of fun, Justine. And you were just asking if I could sign your, your niece's, Rosie's book, Outcast. Um, and then there's somebody else, Mark, whose 10-year-old son is a massive fan. Thank you. And again, asking if I could sign the books. I'm afraid the answer is no, simply because... It just gets too complicated. I know, you know, you, you offer to sort of send in the postage sometimes, but it, it, it would just get too complicated. I know I would have had requests from all over the world, and so I'm afraid that the answer is no. But if I do another book tour and an event in your area, you know, details will be on my website, and then by all means, come along and I'll sign your books. Um, moving on, we've got a general question about writing, um, an interesting one from Abna. How do you hook the reader with the first sentence using mystery? And how do you get your amazing stories? Thank you for that. Um, well, the short answer is it's hard work. Um, the amazing stories bit, how, where do you get your stories from? I wanted to just return to this because somebody, I think it was in the, the December version of uh, MP Live, um, had asked about where do I get the stories from? And afterwards, I was thinking I didn't really explain it properly. And the best way I can I can say it is that Yes, I get ideas from sort of, you know, as I'm walking along or, or watching TV or something, but they're just sparks. They're only sparks. Um, and I sort of jot them down and because I think they're interesting. And then after a while, they start coming together into a story. But then the, the sort of X factor is hard work. And the same goes for um, the beginnings of stories, which I think are just incredibly hard. So... Um, they don't just come to me, those first lines. And I know that, um, I say that advisedly, because, you know, I mentioned this gothic story I'm writing. I've written it. I've written the whole thing. But the first few chapters need a bit of work still. So I'm working on just those first few chapters and trying to get the beginning right. You know, I've that's probably about the 30th time I've thought, yes, I've got it. And I haven't. So, you know, it's just hard work. Yoga helps as well when you're really, really relaxed. Sometimes something can trot into your mind. That's how I got the beginning of Spirit Walker, which was just up on screen there. Now, let's move on to Ethan, I think, um, who has a question. Uh, yes, this is an interesting one. Do you have any good facts about yourself that not many people know? Um, my school loves your books. Um, and We've been reading Wolf Brother. Now, that's a tricky one because they, they, these must be good facts, but I don't want to boast. So I had to have a, a real think about this, Ethan. Um, food is always a good one. My favourite food, which nobody may know, is apple crumble with cream, whipped cream preferably, preferably my mum's apple crumble because she puts nuts in the crumble. Um, and I also like mashed avocado on brown toast, which is really, really nice. Um, my computer is 19 years old. Some people may know that. Not this computer that I'm talking to you now on, but the one I actually write on, which is downstairs in my study. That's 19 years old. And so it's older than quite a lot of my readers. Um, and I just hope it continues for another 10 years. And the other fact I thought I might share with you is that I really like nicely coloured stationery. Um, what I mean by that is, well, let me show you. This is one of the new ones that I got. This is the most beautiful file 
I don't know. My sister got it for me, and I just think it's really pretty. Uh, and so I keep my writing records in that, and that's what that's like a sort of log of um, what book I'm writing at the moment, how long it's taking me, any problems I have. I'm not going to show you what's inside it because that's all got my new projects in. So I like nicely coloured stationery. And another one that I could show you, a piece of nicely coloured stationery, is this is one of those beautiful books that looks like a sort of, it's made of, I don't know, leather or something. And that's where I wrote all my ideas for Dark Matter. Um, you know, that's where I first had the idea for a polar ghost story and things like that. It just helps. You know, it, it helps when you've got pretty stationery. So there we are, some, I hope, good nice fact oh and the other one is i talk to myself quite often i live on my own but i'm always nice to myself um there we go now jennifer moving on um it's this is a very nice comment first of all hard to express how much of an impact your books have had and then a question um yes you're, you're asking about you know resort for your own project resources um, about plants for healing and the use of plants and that sort of thing, the properties of plants, ancient herbal remedies. Yeah, it's a really di difficult one. I, I went and had a look at my bookshelves. I'm just going to reach down and get what I came up with. Um, I mean, there's there's a, I don't know which country you live in, uh, Jennifer, but I mean, there's an old, fairly old book called Food for Free by Richard Maybe. Um, don't know if you can see that, but it's quite useful. Um, it's, you know, English wild plants and, and a little bit of folklore and, and what they're used for. The books of Ray Mears, um, outdoor survival books, those are pretty useful as well. I, I've, I've used them in the past. Um, another one which I do enjoy is um, the SAS Survival Handbook by John Lofty Wiseman. Um, it's it's pretty pretty good. And then there's, you know, ancient, st older stuff. Um, there's a book that I actually bought with my pocket money when I was about 12, and it's called Culpepper's Complete Herbal. Culpepper lived at the time of the Civil War, the Roundheads and the Cavaliers, and it's really interesting. Um, I mean, some of it probably doesn't work, but a lot of it does, and it's got, it, it's just interesting. And then I use local local knowledge you know i just pick up a, you know if i'm in canada or something or alaska there might be a little local booklet or something um websites i can't point you to because i don't use them really for research but i hope that's given you something um and good luck with your project now moving on to zara um who actually goes to my old primary school the study um and you've got an interesting question. What is your personal favourite from the books that I've written? And that changes, Zara, um, because it's usually the one I've just written. Because writing is really hard. And so when I'm writing a book, it's not my favourite because it's really hard. And I know the story I want to write, but, oh, it's such a mess. And how do I do it? You know, but when I've just finished it, it's still fresh in my mind, but all the difficulties have been smoothed out and I'm pretty pleased with it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have finished it. So at the moment, my favourite is Thin Air, um, my grown-up ghost story, because I finished it a while ago and it's fresh in my mind. Although this this new one, this gothic one, um, which I haven't yet got a title for, so it's just called Gothic in my mind, that's fast becoming a favourite because I've almost finished it. So thank you. Interesting question. Um, now, where are we? Yes, we've got three questions with some lovely praise about Wolf Brother. Always nice. So thank you for that. First, we've got James, um, who was hooked. Just the kind of book I was looking for. I'm delighted because I, I know the feeling. Sometimes you really feel like a certain kind of book um, and you want to be able to find it. Sorry about the shuffling, but I've got notes on, on bits of pe on printouts, you see, so I need to sort of see what I've written. Um, then we've got something from Steve, who's actually 46 and very enterprisingly started reading his daughter Amelie's books and found Chronicles of Ancient Darkness. I'm really glad you enjoyed them, Steve. Uh, I'm delighted. And oh, this is a lovely one. from. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Björn Steiner from Sweden. Um, I'm envious, Björn, because you, you know, when you read Chronicles, it reminded you of sled dogs and trekking and traveling in nature, of which you have much more in Sweden. Um, but this is also lovely, the fact that um, because you like the book so much, 
you made a donation to the Group of Wolves, which is a society that takes care of wolves in um, in Sweden. Uh, and I'm absolutely delighted that my books have prompted you to do that. It was a lovely thought. And thank you very much for telling me about it. So moving on now, um, we've got one from Leonardo, who I think is Italian, but speaks, you all speak amazing English. Um, Ah, yes, and you're a student of psychology and you say some lovely things. And um, I particularly like the fact that you, you, Cotton, you, you, you've picked up on the, 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 the language I use without, without you know, losing the depth and the culture. Thank you, because that took quite a lot of doing. So it's, it's nice to know I've succeeded and been noticed. Um, now we've got some questions. This is a general one from Nicola. Um, and you were saying, I wonder, was wondering what the inspiration was to write Wolf Brother. That's that's always a difficult one, Nicola, um, because at the time, you know, I just thought, oh, I want to write a story about a boy and a wolf, and I want to set it in the Stone Age. Um, it's only afterwards when people ask me this sort of question, and it's a good question, that I think, yeah, but where did that come from? So I wasn't thinking about it at the time. I just wanted to write the story, but afterwards I realised, well, when I was a, a child, I was really keen on wolves and I was really keen on the Stone Age. And then when I grew up, I had a really scary encounter with a big bear in uh, California in the forest. Um, that's where it all came together. But at the time of writing it, I wasn't really thinking like that. So I think there's a bit more about that bear encounter on my website, michellepaver.com. Um, I think I tell the story, but that gives you a little, little flavour for how the idea came about. Now we've got a lovely one from Saraka, who's in Indonesia. Um, so marvellous that you can, your English again is superb, but Saraka has a problem because you've enjoyed the books, The Chronicles of Ancient Darkness, but you can't find volume six, the last one in Indonesian. And Saraka, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, neither can I. They've sent me, I went down to my library, my, 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 my room in, where I have all the books in all the different languages. I've got a whole wall just covered in Wolf Brother books in different languages. This is the last one in Indonesian I've got. Well, that's I, I, I think it's in Indonesian, and that's Oathbreaker. So that's the last one they sent me. And I have a horrible feeling that they haven't yet published it, published the sixth book. Um, I think the best thing to do would be for you, Suraka, to get in touch with the publishers. They'll listen to you more than they'll listen to me and tell them to get a move on, because I'm afraid I... If, they, if I told them, they wouldn't listen to me, probably. Um, so, sorry about that, but good luck. And um, you'll, you'll soon be able to read it in English, the way your, your English is going, if you can't find it in Indonesian. Now we've got three questions about um, a film, a Wolf Brother movie. Um, here's one from Kelly. Um, you're waiting. And then there's one from Tom, who from Australia. Um who loves, well, you've been reading quite a lot of my books, so thank you for that. Um, and you've seen articles about a Wolf Brother movie. Uh, yeah, there have been articles in the past, haven't there? Uh, don't worry, I am going to answer this, but I'm just getting through the questions. Then there's Melissa, um, finally. And, and you saw a trailer for this new movie, Alpha, and you were reminded of Chronicles of Ancient Darkness, and you wondered, is the movie based on the book? Um, and did I have anything to do with it? Uh, well, I can answer that one. No, I didn't. No, uh, this new movie, which I've also seen the trailer, um, isn't based on Wolf Brother. Um, it has, yeah, there's a wolf in it, and it's set in the Stone Age. Um, I'll have to be careful what I say. But um, in terms of my books, there are no plans at the moment to make uh, a film there have been film deals in the past, so you're quite right, uh, you know, if, if you've seen articles in the past, but I'm afraid, you know, things happen and, and then people get excited and then they think, no, we're not going to make a film, so we're afraid we're between deals, but if anything happens on this, you will hear it on my website first. And now we've got, um, ah, yes, an interesting one from Sophia or Sophia. Um, you've been reading Wolf Brother with your class, uh, and you've got a question about Torek's first big kill. How did I know how to use all the organs? Good research, actually. That, that's how I knew. I did some reading. I looked at my, you know, my various books like Ray Mears, and there are lots of other books on, on 
you know, hunting and how to cut up carcasses and things. But I also went and talked to people who actually did it and saw some carcasses being cut up, particularly the Sami uh, up in Lapland who were sort of butchering reindeer because they live on reindeer. And then also the Inuit um, who, who live on, on seals. So by the time I wrote Wolf Brother, I was reasonably familiar with what you do with carcasses. But then, you know, I had to adapt it for Torak and for the story. Um, it's quite fun, though. Um, I enjoyed that. And I could have gone on for pages, but I had to cut it down. And then we've got one from uh, Mr. Sunderland, who I think is a teacher, and concluded the term's work on Wolf Brother with a, a, an amazing looking tea party book club. Um, and you had some questions from, yeah, there, there's the, qu the picture. I mean, it looks all wonderful. Very civilized as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not very Stone Age, but great. <laughs> much more, much more tasty, I should think. A couple of questions from from your pupils. Um, one child asked how I came up with a name for Torak. Um, yeah, the name for Torak. Basically, I made it up, but I tried to use sounds that sounded fr from old languages. I think I looked at um, Norse and, and things like that. Uh, I thought I'd made it up, and then when I went up to Greenland to do some research for um, Spirit Walker, my Inuit guide said, oh, Torak, that means something in my language, in Inuit. And I thought, oh, gosh, I hope it's, I hope it's nice because I, the book was about to be published. And she said, oh, it means perfect. So I thought that was quite spooky, actually. Uh, not that Torak is perfect, but that's, I, that's the story of Torak's name. And the other question was, um, how many drafts did it take me to do Wolf Brother? I never actually counted, but it was probably about 30 or 40. It was a lot of drafts. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of rewriting because it was the start of the world, you know, so I had to get it, had to get it right. And I do a lot of drafts anyway. So, ah, we have a repeat question from Enzo, uh, a regular. Hello, Enzo, again. Um, you call it a spoilery question, but I, I don't think it's too spoilery, so I haven't edited it this time. Did I ever consider making Torak spirit walk into Wolf's body? That's a great question. The answer is yes, I did consider it. And that's all I'm going to say, Enzo. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Um, now we move on to, finally, we've got five sequels. Um, wait a minute, I've lost my... No, that's okay. We've got five questions about sequels and prequels and things like that. So I'll, I'll go through all the questions and, I'll, and then I'll answer them. Um, now I don't know how to pronounce your name, Yale, I think. Um, you're 12 and you've loved the Torek books. Will I please write more of them? Dalton, uh, yeah, you're very persuasive. Um, uh, Ghost Hunter supposed to be the last book, but the way it was left off with them promising to come back, I'm not sure they promised to come back, uh, Dalton, but yes, I suppose they did. They promised in Kedin they'd come back. You're quite right. So thanks for reminding me of that. And we have Sally, um, who's been reading them with her 12-year-old son. Um, will I be writing more about Torak and Wren? I'm, I'm glad you've enjoyed them so much, Sally. Oh, and we have a long one, too long to, to put in its entirety, but I can assure you I've read it from another regular, uh, Yulia in Slovenia, who writes the most amazing English, again, with a very long idea, a great idea for something that could happen in a sequel all about... Um, the son of Eostra getting involved with Ren and Torak. It's a really good, and, and Yulia, you were quite disappointed that um, I said about that I wasn't going to use your previous idea in, in any new um, Chronicles book. I'm sorry you're disappointed, but you see, the thing is, Yulia, they're your ideas. And so if I, if I wrote a, a sequel, they would have to be my ideas. Um, that's just the way it goes if you're a writer. So try not to be disappointed, but congratulations on having some really good ideas. Trevor um, just said basically Wolf Brother sequel, from which I guess you know that I'm taking that as a request. And finally, Christian uh, Ramirez or Christian, um, who also enjoyed Chronicles, so thank you for that. Uh, has there been any development on the prequel? Um, and very nicely, you say it's your favourite series. Well, now I'll answer all these questions about prequels and sequels and things. And I have before, so, you know, on previous editions of MP Live, but I, I will again. 
I used to always say in the past years that I would never, ever write a sequel because, you know, it was six books and it had a shape and, and that's it. Um, but I have found over the last few years that Tarek and Ren and Wolf, they haven't gone away the way characters of other books have. They're still with me, which makes me think that at some point in the future, I probably will write um, a sequel. But I have to get a really good idea first. So I'm not announcing yet that I will because, you know, I'm only saying it might be possible that I would do it. Um, I don't think it would ever be a prequel, something in the previous to it. Um, but one thing I can say is that if I did write a sequel, it would definitely, definitely feature Torak, Ren and Wolf. It wouldn't involve, you know, whole new characters. It would definitely have the ones that some of you seem to rather like. And that's an absolute promise. Well, I, you're all very persuasive, so I think I'd better stop there. Otherwise, I'll say too much. Um, but thank you very much for asking such brilliant questions. I think I've been nattering on for long enough. Um, but keep the questions coming in, please. Um, uh, just the best way of, well, you probably know that I don't really answer posts because I'm too busy writing and I've got a 19-year-old computer. Um, but uh, the best way of getting in touch with me is to go to my website, michellepaver.com, and click on Ask Michelle and um, fill in the form. And that, way, that will get to me. And I will eventually answer the question on the next edition of Michelle Paver Live. Um, so thanks, everybody who's kept in touch. And um, you, as I said, you know, you can follow me on Twitter. All the links are on the website. So it just remains for me to say um, thank you very much for your input. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, I will see you next time. Goodbye.